I'm Justin Mott, full-time photographer, like a user, former reality TV show host from a TV show that you've probably never heard of called Photo Face Off on History Channel Asia. I'm a wildlife photojournalist and assignment photographer. I've shot over 100 assignments for the New York Times around the world, and I own and operate my own commercial photography and video production business called Mott Visuals, based here in Vietnam and working globally. My channel is dedicated to all things photography from the perspective of a full-time working photographer. Today, I'm going to talk about what they don't tell you about being a photographer. I'm not supposed to say anything about this, actually. At the meetings, they say, don't tell people this stuff. Let them figure it out on their own and make all the mistakes on their own. So I could get in big trouble for this. So please, don't tell anyone I'm doing this. All right, let's get into it. Before I get into the details, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And those of you interested in my online store, I have the details here in the description box. I sell prints for $99 with free shipping. It's a great way to support me, great way to support the channel, great way to have some nice artwork for your walls that you can see half framed right there. I also sell photography consulting sessions for one hour for $99 via Zoom. We have a one-on-one -on -one session where we can talk about your portfolio, talk about the business side of photography, talk about a personal project, whatever you want to talk about, keep it photography related. I also sell a preset for $4.99. All of this can be purchased directly through my website in the links below. This preset will not make you a better photographer, but it will add a little bit of pop to your photographs. And now let's get into the things they don't tell you about being a photographer before you're a photographer. Is that a good title? The things they don't tell you about being a photographer before you become a photographer. So the first thing on my list today is that you need a degree, right? A lot of photographers that go into fine art photography or advertising photography or even photojournalism, they think you need a degree to be a photographer. Now I did go to university, but guess what? I never graduated. I went to school for three years, well, longer than that because I spaced it out, but I finished three years. And on my last year, rather than finishing school, I took that money and I traveled. I came to Vietnam and I've never really returned. So that's what I did with my last year. Now I didn't take that money and go around and play around. I took that money and I lived very, very, very cheaply. And I worked on my craft as a photographer and I built up my portfolio as a photographer. And that was beneficial to me. For everybody, they learn different ways that was the system that worked for me. Don't think that you have to go to school to get work. No one on any commercial job, no wedding client, no editorial client has ever said, hey, can I see your degree? Or did you go to school? Your degree in the end is your portfolio. That's your resume, that's your degree, that's everything, your website. Your work there is everything. That's what people are gonna see, that's what they're gonna hire you off. Whatever you think is the best way to achieve that, to get better work on your website, do that. So the next thing on my list is that most of your time and most of your energy and most of your efforts won't be actually shooting. Most of the time for commercial shoots, for wedding shoots, even for editorial shoots, most of your efforts and your energy and work is going into the before and the after. So for editorial shoots, you're planning, you're researching, you're booking your tickets, you're booking your fixture, you're getting access, you're figuring out the story. And then you do the shoot, sure, that's a couple of days, then afterwards you're doing the captions, you're following up, you're sending the pictures to the editor, there's back and forth with the editor. Same goes for commercial shoots, same goes for weddings. You're dealing with the client a lot beforehand, a lot of questions, a lot of emails, a lot of back and forth. Then at the end of the shoot, whether you're doing a lot of post-production, but it's just answering questions, the deliverables, how many, do you have a shot of this, do you have a shot of that, can that one be in black and white, do you have a shot of me looking this way, because I don't like the way I look when I look this way. Even though they look exactly the same on both sides, Anyway, a lot of your time and energy as a photographer is going to be put in before and after the shoot and a lot less during. And the next thing is how long it takes to get paid. I never knew that. I mean, my first several months on assignment, I went broke. I was the busiest I'd ever been as a photographer and I almost ran out of money. I'd maxed out all my cards because of how long it takes to get paid, especially in the editorial world. They don't give a deposit. They have a flat rate and to get your expenses can be arduous. It takes a long time. It can take six months. It can take a year. I mean, it can be a lot of back and forth. It's a weird thing. It's like editors give you the assignment. You're the only contact person, but then when it comes to money, they don't want to deal with it, but you have no other contact person to deal with. So it's very frustrating. It's very difficult and it's a lot of work and it's a lot of emails and it shouldn't be this hard, but it can be. I mean, I have some editorial clients that are fantastic. New York times has been quite streamlined in the payment process, but a lot of my other editorial clients, 
it can be such a hassle. So I try to block all the excuses that they're gonna make because honestly, a lot of accountants, it's not necessarily the editors, but a lot of accountants try to delay payments as long as possible. So I just do a couple basic things to prevent these little lies or deceptions or postponements. So when I send my invoice, I ask them to get back with me just to confirm that they received the invoice because I can't tell you how often people use that dumb excuse. Oh, it's in my spam, I didn't know. No, get confirmation right away, send it. You don't have to be mean, but I always say right away, hey, can you confirm you received this and confirm that the invoice has all the information that you need because that's another one people use all the time. Oh no, we needed the date of the actual submission, not the, whatever, you know, just, oh, we needed it submitted in, in euros, not in dollar, all that. Just get confirmation that it was done right and that they received it and that will help streamline the process. So yeah, in the beginning, it, it was a hassle. I went on back to back to back to back shoots and I thought, oh, this is wonderful, but I hadn't got paid for so many of them and it was the beginning of my career and have any savings built up. So it was just like working off of credit and as my credit card started to get maxed out because of plane tickets everywhere and not getting any fees, not getting any reimbursement for six months, it was a hassle, so plan accordingly. The next thing that they don't tell you is what to do when you're not shooting. Again, like I talked about before, you're putting a lot of effort in before and after with the client, but what do you do when you don't have a shoot? Which does happen. You're gonna go weeks, you're gonna go months without shoots sometimes. So what do you do during that time? How do you stay productive? Well, you have to treat it. I've said this a million times, I say this in all my vlogs, but I like to reiterate this because it doesn't sink in with people often. I just see people get into photography and they think like, listen, that's not why I got into it. I don't wanna be sitting around doing a nine to five or anything like that. Fine, if you're independently wealthy, go for it. But if you wanna make a career, a sustainable career in photography, you have to treat it like a business, you have to treat it like a job, you have to be productive when you're not shooting because that is, guess what, that is most of the time. I've talked about what to do during that downtime and how to stay productive in a whole separate episode and I'll put that at the end of this episode here so you can check that out and I encourage you to check it out because it is important to be productive during your downtime as a photographer if you want to make a living out of photography. The next thing I'll tell you is about professionalism. So that's professionalism in all of your collateral. So making sure that you have good branding, make sure that you know how to produce a proper invoice. Also professionalism with the way that you deal with clients and customer service. Now a lot of clients are gonna ask you stupid questions, request stupid things, make stupid demands. And it's gonna be frustrating and annoying. And you might go and do whole separate vlogs about that to air your frustrations. But to the actual client, to their face or via email, you have to be polite no matter how ridiculous the requests are or the questions are, be polite, don't be condescending, be professional, and this will get you more work from them in the future. It's tempting, I know, but just, just don't. Just be nice, take a breath before you email. If it's one of those like really angry ones where you're mad and like you got the email, like sit on it for a day. Just hang out for a day before you write that email. I'm telling you, oftentimes I've turned things around. I've had clients that were just like horrible, asked really stupid questions or being really aggressive took a breath, killed them with kindness, and they ended up being good clients in the end. Sometimes you gotta teach. You have to do it in a condescending way. You can teach and educate and be nice at the same time. The next thing they don't tell you is the hustle, the constant hustle. A lot of people think like early on in your career, it's gonna be a struggle. Maybe they think that, right? In the beginning, it's gonna be hard, but then once I get work, I'm done, right? I got the work, I won the photo competition, I got this award, cool. Now the work just comes pouring in. Bull, it doesn't work that way. You have to constantly hustle, constantly, 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 constantly. You're adapting, you're hustling, you're changing, you're evolving as a photographer. If you want to continuously get work, this is what you have to do. You have to be hustling, you have to be networking, you have to be productive during that downtime that I mentioned before. So the hustle never ends. Even for me at 43 years old, the hustle continues. Marketing on Instagram, networking in person, all that stuff, the hustle doesn't stop. If you want to continue to work, it's just what it takes. It's a saturated market with a lot of talent out there. The next thing I will tell you is guess what? Most of you out there, not all of you, and I don't mean to like kill people's dreams, but a lot of times you're not going to get paid to just do the work that you love. Now you can get paid to do the work that you love, and I have gotten paid to do the work that I love, but what I'm saying is it's not that simple, or it's most likely it's not only what you're gonna do. So don't type, you know, I know some of you out there like, I got paid, I do this, I do. I'm just saying, if you love, say you love black and white street photography, great, shoot it. Never stop shooting that. Never forget your passion for that. What I'm saying is it's really hard to make a living just off of that. Really hardcore documentary, same thing. Really hard, not impossible, but really hard. You're talking grants, you're talking grant proposals, you're talking competing with amazing storytellers that are out there. 
Don't give up that dream. Never give up that dream. I never would say that to any of you. Keep that dream alive. Just know that to make a sustainable living and as you get older, it's good to diversify. It's good to be okay with shooting other stuff. And whatever that other stuff is for you, you have to figure out that balance of what you're okay with and what you're not okay with. So I, I can't guide you there. I gotta let you go on your own there. The next thing they don't tell you, and a lot of people don't figure this out until it's too late, and it's a real shame, the earlier you get started on this, the better is to start to figure out your savings and your retirement. Now you have to start to think about this. You have to be financially responsible. So later on in your career and you're getting older, like, what are you gonna do for money? You know, say you wanna stop shooting after 60. Say you're a wedding photographer and you are in your mid 60s and you know, it's hard. I'm not saying you can't still shoot in your mid 60s, so I know there's people out there that do it, but maybe for some people it's harder in your 60s or maybe you just don't wanna shoot anymore in your 60s or your 70s. And you know, weddings are very fatiguing on the body. At some point, some point in your life, you might wanna pull back and work a little bit less or you might just wanna fully retire and you work for yourself. There's no retirement plan. There's no 401k plan. So you have to get started on that. And your biggest earning potential is probably in your 30s and in your 40s. So that's the time to start saving. Ideally, you can start in your late 20s, but at a minimum, start in your 30s. Start to put money away. Start to think about retirement. Short-term plan for those bad few months or plan for things like this, like when COVID happens, what do you do because you can't get any work? But long term, you got to plan for your retirement. How are you going to make a living? How are you going to get by later on if you can't shoot anymore or if you just don't want to shoot anymore? Think about that. What I would recommend is start a IRA. Just I'm not going to go into like a whole financial plan here, but what I would recommend is just putting away a certain amount of money every single month, a direct deposit, something that goes into a retirement fund that you can't touch and just make it part of your monthly expenses. Highly, highly recommend it. You'd be surprised how fast that money can grow over time. So that's all for today, guys. Those are just some things that, again, I'm, I'm not I'm not supposed to tell you these things. So I could get in big trouble. I don't know why, I laugh at myself a lot. My sister told me that the other day. She's like, you know what? You laugh at yourself more than anyone else laughs at you. But I guess it's okay, because I'm with myself most of the time. I hope this was helpful, guys. If you have any things you wanna add, or if you have any questions about anything that I said, don't forget to add it in the comment section. I will do my best to reply. Thank you for tuning in today, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And make sure you check out these videos that pertain to what I talked about today. I think you could find them helpful. Have a good day, guys. Bye.